data science actually, uh, which, which is a, recently defined something like we should have some domain science. Uh, whatever the problem you are solving, you should have some basic understanding of what exactly the business problem that you are solving. For example, if you are solving a recommendation engine that is different, if you are trying to solve Internet of Things, so you should have some kind of understanding what the problem actually I am going to solve. So a person who really want to call himself as a data scientist, he must have the understanding of whether it is a hospital or auto industries, finance industries, anything he should have some kind of understanding as well as he must be able to code because most of the data science operations that you want to find out the insights earlier it was just not like using some statistics package but also you have to have some kind of coding experience to write your uh, algorithm in order to discover the pattern what i mean by here is that let us say you have some hypothesis that hey i if i use this variable and uh, um, and another variable so variable 1 and variable 2 then there is a high probability that these two variables would help me to find out another insight of a customer coming to my shop, something like that. So such kind of hypothesis if you really want to solve, you may have some simple steps. Maybe people call it as in the, uh, in the general uh, terms, these are called rules. So these rules people just code it, so that's why you have to have some kind of coding experience. Uh, if you are handling your data, let us say if it is a text data, Generally, people prefer to use Python because Python is very good. And uh, if you want to write the same applications on Hadoop or any other big data architectures, people generally prefer Java. So I'm sure that you people have such kind of experience in writing the uh, uh, codes by yourself. And about uh, these two levels, uh, the most important and very, very uh, keen um, uh, domain is that statistics and mathematics background. At least if you have some kind of basic linear algebra background like how can, I, uh, how can I solve any two equations, linear equations, that is very simple mathematics that we used to do in our 10th class, 10th standard or in plus 1 plus 2. But here you should have some kind of, uh, because in the data science whenever you are solving any problem, you have to boil down to uh, some kind of dimensions because you are handling with the variables. So you should be able to have some kind of understanding of, uh, yes, uh, you should be uh, thinking uh, how these particular data points would fit in two dimensions, maybe three dimensions. And above three dimensions, we may not be able to see that. Does it look like a circle? Does it look like a surface? Does it look like a simple uh, plane? So you should have some kind of imagination about uh, the dimensions, fields, and everything. Because here we are going to deal with lots of variables. For example, in Internet of Things case also, let's say you are collecting some data from some okay automated door, and from the automated door you wanted to see that it should you wanted to turn it into a more intelligent aspect. If you want to turn it into a more intelligent aspect, you put a lot of sensors, so obstacle sensors, some you know, tracking sensors, different sensors you might use. So the data that you are getting from there will be something very huge. And they, especially if you are taking the video data, this will be high dimensional, maybe in 3,000, 4,000, like that. So such kind of high data comes, you should be able to have some kind of simple mathematics equations you should be able to write down. Yes, if I'm having these 3,000 dimensions, how should I really find out the patterns in these 3,000 dimensions? Maybe just to tracking a person who is crossing the door, for that one, out of these 3,000 dimensions, you may need only four or five dimensions. So um, my emphasis here is that uh, I'm sure that we have done all these courses before, like mathematics and statistics, but when it comes to this day particular uh, course, try to think in those dimensions how we are actually going to handle these variables. So uh, my definition of data science here is that it should be, we all should actually build skills in three uh, aspects. The first one is that a domain science. First question is that what is the problem we are solving? whether it's a recommendation engine problem, whether it's Internet of Things, whether it is a simple uh, lift, uh, building a smart lift, or is it something like uh, what is uh, hospital uh, hospital prediction problem. So that we, have, we should have some uh, experience there. And uh, coding, and then mathematics and statistics. As I mentioned that, okay, what kind of problems can you solve? So predict whether the patient hospitalized due to a heart attack will have a second heart attack, whether he will come to my hospital or not what time he, he will come to the hospital, which is something like he called a prediction problem. So in data science, why we are walking through this data? 
because we are walking through this data as somebody mentioned we want to understand some patterns for the same example if a person who is 50 years old uh, uh, 50 years old and there is a high probability that he would likely to visit my hospital not my hospital any hospital so how did you say that because of my experience I found that okay as the person is growing and crossing 50 there is a high probability that he uh, he will have a lot of problems health problems so that he will visit the hospital so this is a simple pattern that you find that is a completely coming based on experience but from the data how do I find it out that's that's what the uh, main thing here uh, that's what data science would really help you out how data science would help you is that you will have the person's age you will have the person's previous diseases you will have the person's uh, previous uh, prescription records you will have the per person's uh, previous uh, uh, health records so by going through all these health records and everything any person who is uh, experienced in health uh, in me medical industry you would easily tell that yes this person has these problems so which is kind of a prediction so the same thing we wanted to solve it not for one person but for many people for many other having different different dimensions of problems so such, that that is how whenever you are starting any project first you have to keep in mind that what is the problem i'm solving should i actually i am I actually predicting the price of your stock market okay how the stock market would really go tomorrow so if you go to a very good uh, uh, market person uh, market analyst he will, he will have more experience he will have more domain knowledge to predict that one how he has all these patterns embedded in his mind so in a similar way in the data science project you will have to find out these patterns so for example first of all as i mentioned you are starting a problem your manager asks you, okay, we want to uh, find out the, uh, we want to build a product where it is something like uh, it should behave very smart and intelligent. The smart and intelligent definition itself is that he is asking you to come up with an algorithm or he is asking you to come up with a set of rules. So what are those rules that I should really use so that I can make this very smart? Very, very simple uh, application is that whenever I go to the store, uh, the doors at the uh, uh, entry of the stores would open the moment I reach there. Even if I'm not entering inside, if I reach there, the doors will open there. But my boss, my manager tells that intelligently you have to design the door, the sensor, whenever any person comes, even the dog comes and stands there, it is opening. But they don't allow the dog to enter into the shop. So how do you really design it in more intelligent way? So what is that? What is that your problem? Let us say my problem is that it should open only for those people who are entering into my shop. I, there will be some people walking on the road and uh, walking very close to the store. Even if those people are not entering into the shop, it is opening the door. So this is my another problem. So what, what should I do? So I should be able to have a system where I have to uh, first collect the data. So what is the data that I, I require? in order to solve this problem. Maybe it is tomorrow recommendation engine. Yes, for recommendation engine, I want to recommend the products whenever the person comes to the shop next. Yes, so what is the data that I should really uh, uh, collect for this particular problem? So is the data already available? I'll ask that by my, by my manager, okay, is this data already available? He says no. Something He says yes, some part of data is available. Okay, if no, then what is the best way I can acquire the data? That is also you should be able to actually design it. If you are designing a smart um, entry door, then you should be able to see that what kind of data we have. The data is something like, okay, uh, we have only one sensor. Maybe I will use camera there. I will get the video data. And this video data is a completely unstructured data that I cannot keep it in the simple machines. There I may use uh, some advanced databases and I store the data and after getting the data let us say I use video data after getting the data so what are the explorations should I do in this data so am I going to find out uh, different characteristics of the people the, the speed at which they are walking and the direction they are moving and uh, what is the uh, actually their height so all these kinds of variables that I really consider whenever I go through the data that is called we have to understand the data 
by exploring uh, by exploring different sets of dimensions like okay which variable oh this variable okay this variable is helping me to know that that person is coming towards the camera uh, assume that camera is right top of the door assume towards the camera then it is a high probability that he would enter into my shop if the direction is uh, completely uh, perpendicular to the camera's thing then he is not entering to my door then I would that camera is connected to the sensor and say that I don't open the door so these kinds of insights we have to discover so in order to discover these insights if if I am the person standing at that same shop uh, for seven days I can easily I'm intelligent so I'm an intelligent human being I can easily find out yes this these are all the patterns uh, there are some people coming this side and there are kids entering, there are some storekeeper, some luggage is coming, some other uh, people are having different behaviors. I can study all these behaviors. But now I want to study all these behaviors from the data. That is the challenge. So for that actually I build some hypothesis there. That is what building hypothesis is that people who are coming at the speed of 20 kilometers per hour walking speed I'm just throwing some random number here okay are high probable to enter into my store people who are coming who are actually uh, coming very slow they are not interested in entering into my store something like this I build some hypothesis so once I build that hypothesis then I'll test that hypothesis by using the data that is where data science comes into the picture now all these analysis and everything is done now you you want to tell uh, you have to convince your uh, manager or your, your your boss that yes these are these these are all the actual patterns i discovered it is not simply finding out the patterns it's not simply finding out the insights you should be able to convey your message in such a way that the manager can easily understand so these are the main basic principles I really uh, suggest all of you to um, consider whenever you work on any data science project. Better if you use many data sources, it, it is better to have more kind of information you can get out of it. And if you are actually planning to collect the data, especially in Internet of Things, the way you collect the data that really, really matters a lot. A very simple example I can provide here is that um, in a store, uh, you you want to know the customers' uh, profiles uh, or customers' behavior. How many people are really actually coming to my store to buy, or how many people are just coming for window shopping? This is uh, th this is the actual question your your manager asks you to solve. Then he asks you, okay, go and collect the data. So if you if he is really asking you to collect the data, then you should be able to uh, come up with an idea. Okay. I use uh, different sensors, should I use video sensors, should I use uh, some simple infrared sensors and where exactly should I put these uh, video data and even if I collect the data it should not be redundant. What I mean to say is that uh, keeping the taste, two cameras almost very close may not be helpful. A very simple uh, example I'm throwing. So you have to design the smart ways to collect the data. Water may be the problem. If it is a recommendation engine problem, then you have to have certain ways to collect the data. So the data that you are collecting uh, should not be redundant in the sense you should have some kind of uh, insights that you are really interested to find it out. So based on that, that uh, intention you have to arrange your data collection. And then after collecting the data, you will get lots of data for sure. You will get lots of data maybe 200 GPs of data or 300 GPs of data including images, videos and everything. But your problem that your manager is asking you to find it out, who are the people really buying your product? Who are the people coming for window shopping? So in order to do all these things, I don't have to fit all these cameras or anything. Just I will use point of sales, uh, point of sales, how many people had purchased, how many people had actually purchased and at the entry of the gate I will have a sensor how many people had really entered into my shop. So this is enough for me. No need to put video, video cameras and all these things to see this, to solve this simple problem. So that's what you have to really understand what is my business problem first and then what is the best way I can collect the data to solve that and prioritize the data. And once you have the data, as I mentioned, you have to use simple mathematics. 
Suppose simple mathematics is nothing but you have to find out some equations like y is equal to x square plus x, x, x1 square plus x2 square. Something like that. X1 is uh, defining some variable about uh, the person's age and X2 is representing his, uh, um, uh, his number of items he purchased. Something like that. So by using some simple uh, equations, you should be able to see the, uh, uh, the relation between the variables. And as I mentioned, help yourself with the data visualization tools. And this is utmost important is that once, which is very, very important in, in any project is that whenever you found these insights, um, if you go and tell your boss that uh, yes, I use this x square plus y square and uh, all these f of x plus g of x and all these things, then he would not be able to understand. So you should be able to explain in your more simple terms, communicate in a very simple words so that they can easily understand. So these are the very basic principles that we should remember whenever we are working on this project. Okay, so now I'm actually talking about this data acquisition. So we have to design methods to collect the data, okay, and already if you are having the data, let us say if it is internal data, internal data means that is available in our own data warehouses like customers data, purchase data and everything. If it is external data, let us say if you are using any um, other sources data like Axiom data or some IXA data, these are all some external data uh, vendors, they generally supply about the data of that person. And nowadays, if, if you want to understand about uh, many job portals or trying to understand about the uh, professional, uh, uh, professional candidature and everything, so they started crawling through these uh, LinkedIn and the different kinds of websites and trying to build profiles around each and every candidate to find out how much this particular person is suitable to my job. So in that case, uh, you, if you are solving such kind of problem, you have to get this external data by using their APIs, okay, go into the LinkedIn or Facebook or if you want to know that how many people are coming to your website and how much traffic is happening on your websites, especially in the e-commerce website. So you can use this Google Analytics APIs. So I think you people know about the ETL tools and everything, right? So these are very standard tools people use to acquire the data from different sources. So. This is what exactly uh, right now um, the simple Y diagram that shows that we are having different sets of files, okay, uh, coming from different sources, CSV files, text files, JSON files, video files, image files. Uh, based on your uh, problem, you are collecting the data from different uh, sources. You use different uh, uh, APIs and once those data is collected and keeping in your databases like D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, so these are the guys who are called like data scientists who their main job is just to go through this data and understand what exactly the data is uh, about and this is this is the region where we are going to play the main role okay so he uses a simple kind of statistics and mathematics to find out and then he will provide the graphs and everything uh, based on his uh, based on his uh, um, business problem and everything